Tu m'as défendu. Est-ce qu'il n'y a pas d'aide Yeah. Can you give me to put it on my little car? What did you say I was? All right, good evening. So, Bill is, uh, he at least has one more class in Jude. Um, so he's going to finish Jude up, um, Lord willing, next Wednesday. Um, I am taking first, or I'm going to be taking the class after that and teaching first John. Next quarter, you're in Philippians, right? That's what you said. What, every time I ask him a question, he always like, what? What are you talking about? I didn't know. I didn't say that. Blah, 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 blah. You know, that's why I'm just going to, from now on, I'm just going to say, this is what Mike is doing. Like Eliza does. Um, so then Mike is taking Philippians from that. So Ty sort of said this a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, Bill and Pam, they, are, they have had some, this is not what Ty said, but some roof issues. If you, you know, he's been talking to us about it. The in, dealing with the insurance company and everything, and they were supposed to be there starting yesterday or whatever. That's why they're not here today because of the, you know, when you're getting a roof done, you've got a short window. So you got to get it done when you can get it done. So that's why he's not here finishing up. I believe he needs one more class. So Ty mentioned this a couple weeks ago whenever Bill was not feeling well, a one week class. What do you do? Where do you start? Where do you stop? So I didn't want it to be where I started in 1 John, and then if he needed two weeks or whatever, then we picked up again. So I didn't want to do that. So I went back into my days of teaching the middle school and the teens and the high school and the young adults. And when we would go to a youth rally, when we would come back, we would, when we all gathered together, we would talk about what we enjoyed so much and what we learned from the youth rally. So, so very briefly, I see Ty, I see Gary, I see Hilton, I see, what's up, Dave? You look really good. And I see Mike. And they were all at the He-Man Women Haters Men's Fellowship last, this past Saturday. And we were there um, with hundreds and hundreds of, of men from around the Carolinas there in uh, Rock Hill, Fort Mill area. And it was a wonderful day. Um, really, really enjoyed it. That was my first time going. I know, Hilton, I know you've gone several times. Gary, you've gone uh, several times, twice, twice now. Uh, Dave, th th this was your first time. This was your first time. Mike, I know you've gone many times. I mean, you go so fast, it's like you weren't even there. Um, but it was a, it was a wonderful time. So, um, don't get me wrong here. Those of you who were not there, this is not just a class about that. This is just a segue into what I want to talk about. So very quickly, Ty, what, what was your favorite thing about this past Saturday? Um, the togetherness. The togetherness. Okay. Ah, togetherness. That's deep. So it wasn't a message. It wasn't the song. It was just being together. Okay. No. Well, there were some women there. There were some women there. They were there serving us. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. Just, they were there adding wisdom, keeping us in line. <laughs> Miss Joanne, you know I'm going to get in trouble. I mean, that's what's so fun. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Gary, what was your favorite thing? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hilton. I've said it over time. Uh, the volume. Yeah. I think everybody in that room was saying it out. Yeah. So it was the volume. Yep. You know, uh, the first song that I participated in since that Saturday was the first song here today. And I was like, man, I don't sound anything like what I did on this past Saturday. Um, Dave. Yes, uh, I enjoyed the singing. And yeah. Yeah. And louder and louder yeah. And at the end, the hair on the back of your neck yep. ended up. Yep. If I had hair on my head, it would have been, you know, gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike. I don't really have a favorite. Um, 
thing. You like the whole thing. The lunch, I'm sure you, the barbecue, you were good with that? Yep. 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 Yeah, it was nice here. It was nice to hear some good preaching for for change. I heard Ty. I heard you were really thrilled with the little Debbies that were there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I, you know, piggybacking on what y'all just said. So the singing was was awesome. Um, the messages I really liked. So uh, Grace, our daughter, uh, lives in Rock Hill, and she got married this past year. Son-in-law Joseph, you know, he was there. So that's where they attend is the um, Gold Hill Road. And so we we went up there. We made it a weekend. So Carl and I went up last Friday, uh, stayed there. You know, Joseph and I stayed up talking. Some some he had some questions about some stuff, and we were up talking late. So um, when we went, I said, we walked in. I was like, hey, man, you know, wherever you want to sit, this is your, this is your show. You just, I'm, I'm following you. So we went where we were, and we saw Jim uh, Lamb, Jim Gallagher coming in, and I uh, saw Dave coming in. So they were going one way, and Joseph was leading me another way. So I went, went over here. And then five minutes later, um, Carla's, whenever we get started, Carla's uncle sits two pews in front of me, who's a preacher in, in North Carolina. And then two pews behind me was Stephen Farr, which is a um, husband of one of Carla's really good friends, Missy Farr, who is the son of David Farr, who passed away this past year. And so he was two pews behind me. So, every, you know, it was all like, hey, hey, then I see everybody walking in. And then I see people from Duncan, from Bible Bowl that we see. Come, sitting right across from me. And then I see John Dennison, an elder at St. Andrew's Road, who we talk with a lot with Bible Bowl. And then I see um, Bill Watts from North Charleston. And it's just all of these things. And it was just wonderful, sort of what, like what y'all were, y'all were talking about, just being together with that. And then the singing starts. And as Dave said, you know, there was, it, it was... It was going, but then was cranking, man. Our God, He is alive. I mean, that was so good. Um, if I had to pick one favorite part, it probably was that. Caleb Young did a did an awesome job leading us in that song, and it was one of those songs like Hilda and I were, were talking about before the the devotional period. You could sing out loud as loud as you wanted to. I first was wondering because there were the counter melodies. I was first wondering with the different songs, like, we don't have any women here singing with us. How's this going to sound? And then I thought, well, you know, maybe there's some people like me. I don't have a part. I sing the part I like, no matter what it is, no matter what tone it is, which is not good for anybody around me or whenever, I, you know, y'all get the short straw and I'm, and I'm up there leading. But when, when that, those, those songs started, it was just awesome because... You know, they said, oh, just pick a part now. You, you sing your part now, whatever it is. If it's, if it's alto, if it's whatever, just sing it. Sing that part. Stick, stick with it. But whenever they got to our God, He is alive. Oh, my goodness. I was just singing as loud as I could. And it didn't matter because everybody else was singing good and they were drowning me out. And I, I, I remember just having my head up, smiling, looking up. It was awesome. It was great. It was fellowship because it was the Carolinas men's fellowship. So, do you remember what the theme of the fellowship was? The, song, the songs. Yeah, so each speaker took one of the songs and they went through it and they gave a message from one of the songs. Not, obviously not all of them. But that was the theme that then sings my soul, ancient songs for modern man. And we had from the fifth Psalm, the 46th Psalm, the hundredth Psalm, you know, and a whole bunch of those other ones. And it was, it was great, but we're going to do one of those tonight also. But my question to you is this, what is fellowship? We know it's 
Joy Divine, because that's why I led that song. Um, what is fellowship? This is where y'all talk. You know, we live in a world in a government that tries to divide us, right? Mm-hmm. When you're, in, when you're in God's kingdom, there's no division. The world tries to divide us on whether it's economic, where we stand economically, what we look like on our skin, and stuff like that. But there we're all the same. You know, we're just... One of you said it. You might have said it, Gary. I know Mike said it about the library. We were there with, I think somebody said it was like 400 and something people, uh, men or whatever. But we were there with 400 some odd or however many it was, even in this number right now. We're there with like-minded individuals who are coming together and they want to be there and we are there to praise our God to fellowship with one another encouraging one another, those friendships building each other up. And we're there, we were praising Him in song. It was wonderful to be able to do that. So fellowship, a definition as a noun, a friendly association, especially with people who share one's interests. A group of people meeting to pursue a shared interest or aim. Now as a verb, to join in fellowship, especially with a church member, to admit to fellowship as in church. And then I looked it up because they had the little tab up there in the Bible, a Bible definition. Holding our lives in common. Holding our lives in common. So we have that, I think we would all agree, in that fellowship that we had Saturday, in that fellowship that we're having here together, We have that common interest, that common aim. And what is that? The love of God. So we have that. So what I wanted to do tonight is, uh, we've got 19 minutes, so I might go a little bit quicker than what I I anticipated. What we're going to do is we're going to go through some of the familiar scriptures, right? Now, even though this is not an introduction into 1 John, it is sort of, it's a standalone one week class. However, it's a segue into 1 John. Because what we're going to see in those first couple of chapters that we have in 1 John is fellowship. Fellowship with one another. Fellowship with God. Fellowship with Christ. So even though this is not an introduction into 1 John, it's a segue. Okay, so when we, whether or not Bill needs a week or two weeks or whatever, we're going to be able to come back and think about fellowship. So Acts 2, can you turn there and we're going to read, we're going to read a few scriptures and then we're just going to go into the 96th, excuse me, the 63rd Psalm. All right, so Acts 2, beginning at verse 40. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. And we we know this is the day of Pentecost. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. We think about that a lot, about the, you know, what they were doing. And we talk a lot about what's going going to come up. We're going to read here in just a few seconds. But they continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them all among all as anyone had need. Now we're going to look at a couple of other scriptures here, and it's in the book of Philippians. Philippians, there's three examples here that I wanted to look at. Chapter 1 of Philippians, beginning at verse 3 of chapter 1 of Philippians. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Now, I'm reading from the New King James Version. 
Some of you might be reading from the English Standard or the NIV or the New American Standard. Uh, from what I looked up, if I wrote this down correctly, the ESV says partnership instead of fellowship. The NIV says partnership as well. And the New American Standard says participation. I think those are all similar words of what we're talking about. But for you, your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. All right, now let's look at chapter 2 of Philippians really quickly. Uh, verse 1 of chapter 2. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Look each of, uh, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Once again, if you're using a different translation than New King James Version, that word fellowship for the ESV is participation, and the NIV said a common sharing. Philippians 2, that passage, that subsection of that right there that I read, there, you know, I'm sure you're the same way where you will say, well, you know, I've got favorite scriptures, I've got favorite uh, passages, I, got, I have favorite stories, you know, the ones that you always go to. Uh, and you, you, I, I hate to just, because I can say that so many different times, but this Philippians chapter 2, these verses, they just speak to me. I, I, I try to think of this in so many different situations in, in my life where I try to remind myself of this, and I just love the thought that comes here. And then later on, I'm not going to read it now because this is Mike's class going to be next quarter. But later on, it, he not only tells them what to do, he tells them how to do it because he talks. To, he says about Jesus and about that Jesus consider, did not consider it um, where he left, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he left up high to come down and he served. He tells us how to do it. But here where if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy fulfill my joy by being like-minded, same love, one accord, one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Look out for uh, not only your own interests, but also for the interests of others. I always find a way to put that in whenever I've, do a wedding ceremony. Um, so that applies so and so much. And Mike, I'm not going to, I could talk about that instead and, and let me move on. All right. Chapter three is the last one of Philippians. And then we're going to get into that, that 63rd Psalm. Verse seven of chapter three, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yes, indeed. I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings, being conformed to His death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Once again, the ESV says share, NIV says participation, but the thought there, the fellowship of his sufferings. All right, that's the backdrop. That's leading up to 63rd Psalm. Anybody have any comments about what we've read so far? Anything that I've been going over really quickly to get to this point? We have time for your comments if anybody has anything. Mike? I know you got some. No, 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 no. You go ahead. Go ahead. What you got? No, no. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Sixty-third Psalm. Now, I purposely did not mention the the verses in First John that talk about fellowship because 
That's what we're going to do when we get into, get into the class. But the 63rd Psalm. Now, that, you know, the little heading that they put there, that little heading uh, says, Joy in the Fellowship of God. When you, when you read through this, there's, the word fellowship is not in there. But you can see the attributes of that fellowship that David is writing about. What we were just talking you know, about in the sharing, the participation, all of those types of things. So don't look for the word fellowship in this, but I think you're going to be able to see some of those attributes. So 63rd Psalm. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Listen, just, just in those simple words, the beauty of that. You're mine. I am yours. And I am going to seek you early, early in the day where when Ever, the, all the things that are before him, he's wanting to get him now. And why is that? My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Now, it might be important to be able to point out where, where is David, what is it believed, what David is doing whenever he's writing this? Go ahead, Mike. No? Thought you were, raise your hand. Ty? It says wilderness of Judah. Yeah. So, what do we know about David throughout whenever he was anointed king, throughout his, he faced trials, right? From the beginning, whenever Saul was trying to keep him from taking to be a king, the king, to whenever his son was revolting against him, leading a rebellion against him. David's on the run lots of times. So when you think about this, and he's in the wilderness of Judea, right? This says, mine says Judah, but I think it's Judea. Um, the EA? Is that right? Y'all have that? Yeah, okay. So he is facing this. He is on the run. He's facing battles. He's facing rebellion. So whenever he's going through here, this is what he's saying. He's in a time of trouble. And he's appealing to God. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Those simple things that he needs, the sustenance that he needs, he doesn't have. But what he does have is what he really needs, which is God. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. That's one of those things that we need a reminder for. You know, they call it the, the, our life, the rat race. When you're out there, you're trying to get, you know, you got a million things that you're trying to accomplish. And, you know, as soon as, Soon as you're, you're planning for something, something else gets thrown at you. And I have a couple of great examples from today at work, but I don't have time for it. But they, somehow they were working to a devotional and you'll be shaking your head as, as much as I, I was this morning. But uh, spoiler alert, I won't tell you. So you just have to come back at some point in time here. They're good ones though. Very good ones. Ne ones I had never thought of. I thought I was in the middle of a Seinfeld episode today. Um, but he, but what, what David is saying here is, your loving kindness is better than life. All the virtues and all the, the great things about life, all the accomplishments, all of the... Your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Just as we read before about being thirsty and having no water. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount said that blessed are they that hunger and thirst 
for righteousness, for they will be filled. That's what David is getting at right now. He might, he might be in a dry and barren land with no water and no food, but he has God. He has God. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. The visual I have here is, I don't know about y'all, I have a hard time sleeping, and I've had that for, for years, um, where I have tried to go through all the different tricks. I was talking with Joseph about this um, this past weekend. He has a hard time sleeping too. And I said, I've gone through all the different things. I, I've gone th- through trying to have a TV on where I won't think whenever I wake up or, um, or getting up and just changing where I, where I am and trying to fall asleep or um, having a sound machine or, or whatever to just to try to still my mind. And I have this visual of, of David here saying that I remember you on my bed. I meditate on you in the night watches because he's got all these troubles. He's got all these situations, all this rebellion, all this life. But yet, what's stilling his mind is meditating on God. Because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. I have a couple of thoughts that whenever I think of wings, God's wings, I think of in Exodus um, chapter 19 where he says, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Yes, Ty. I'm agreeing with what you're saying. Uh, I remember Jody Apple Mm -hmm. talking about the idea that the Psalms are different in the way that much of the Old Testament is, a, is God's directives toward us. Mm-hmm. The Psalms are man's response to him. And it reminds me right now of the idea of that commercial called uh, Better Help. Mm-hmm. You've seen that commercial where there's the it's, a, it's about therapy, it's talk therapy. Okay. And the Psalms they pointed out during the, or he pointed out maybe during the uh, fellowship was we, we've neglected the idea of responding to God with any range of emotions that we have because we're either afraid or we don't have, and so it causes anxiety and stress to where we maybe don't feel like we should grieve or we don't feel like we should bother God Mm -hmm. or whatever it is. But the Psalms are almost like talk therapy to God. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, the, the, the best way to get it out is to talk about it. (laughs) So, you know, he's, we, we, we have examples obviously with David pouring his soul out. We see it literally when, after the death of the child that um, Uriah the Hittite's wife, um, he is, you know, on the ground, sackcloth and ashes. He's just, he's, he's wailing. And so, you know, talking with God and all of that. And then the child dies and then he goes and he cleans himself up. He goes and eats. And, you know, so he, David is a, wonderful symbol of that of being of expressing himself and his thoughts thoughts to God anybody else second thing I think about here with the wings um, Jesus says in Matthew 23 verse 37 oh Jerusalem Jerusalem the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her how often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. David expresses that you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. It's been his salvation. It's taking care of him in all those times of distress. 
My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. It's a wonderful expression of an example of praise that David has here that he's expressing to God in difficult situations. And remember what he said, your loving kindness is more important than life. I know I went by, went through very quickly. We've got a minute. If anybody has anything that they would like to, we can stay here longer, uh, that they would like to say. But remember, this was not an introduction to 1 John, although it's a segue to it. But keep in mind those the fellowship that we will be talking about. Anybody have any comments? You know, you look at David's life. They're very few that quiet moments in his life. Mm-hmm. Time he decided to stay home and not go to battle. Then he had the Bathsheba episode. I mean, this is, life was just chaos. Mm-hmm. It was chaos. Yeah. yeah. And he needed these moments. He needed this little bit of time to, to say, help me. Yeah. You know? We yeah. talk about our lives being like that. Our lives are hectic, but nothing like David's obviously. So sometimes we just need to slow down and, and evaluate where we're at and, and tell God we need him. Sometimes we're just going to get in the middle lane and let everybody zoom past us. <laughs> Anybody else? I know. Live, live by yourself. You can slow down real good. Yeah. <laughs> Felton? I know that when you start to study it, David, you know, we hear it in the church and you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that. Then you get into that one and you say, look how bad he was at times. And mm-hmm. yet, that's right. That's right. Ty? Can we prepare a list of psalms that would work during rush hour? And <laughs> we could yes, we can. We Why don't you get on that? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I tell you what. Tomorrow morning, right around 6.15, I will be passing by the 526 exchange and I will say, and everybody can say right along with me at 615, your loving kindness is more important than life. <laughs> okay? That's, that's, that's your homework for tomorrow at 615. Mike, you'll already, you know, you'll be the one boom, going right by me. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Absolutely. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for the fellowship. I appreciate it.